Hi, I want to talk about some applications of black body radiation as they relate to our understanding of stars and mapping and the phenomenon known as Wien's Law. Now, Wien's Law is part of the two sort of more classical pieces of electromagnetic radiation to come out of the late 1800s. The first is the Stefan Boltzmann Law, which in thermodynamics we talk about as being the power radiated by an object at a temperature. And it's equal to the emissivity times the Stefan Boltzmann constant times the surface area of our object times the temperature of our object to the fourth power. Now, Wien's Law is, and I fixed it and messed it up again, but Wien's Law is a relationship that says if you take a look at the wavelength where we get the largest intensity of light, there's a proportional relationship between that maximum wavelength and the temperature. Specifically, the maximum wavelength times the temperature equals a constant that happens to be about 2.898 millikelvin times meter. So if you take a look at an intensity curve for light being given off by a black body object, you see it shoot up to a specific spike, what I'm calling lambda max, and then it drops back down to zero as we go up in wavelength. So high wavelength means low frequency, short wavelength means high frequency. So, for the outer surface of our sun, it happens to be at a temperature of about 5,800 Kelvin. So if I take 5,800 Kelvin and I divide it into Wien's constant, I get 500 nanometers as the wavelength of light, which happens to be right in the middle of the visible spectrum. Our visible spectrum is about 400 nanometers to about 700 nanometers because, well, those correspond to the wavelengths of light that are most given off by the surface of our star. Now, interior to the core of our sun, we have a fusion process going on. And towards the core, the temperature is around 3 million Kelvin. So if I take Wien's constant, 0 0.002898 kelvins times meters, divide by 3 million Kelvin, I get a value of 0.096 nanometers which happens to be in the X-ray range. So one of the neat things about X-rays is they're able to get through the gas layers of the outer parts of our sun. So using X-ray astronomy, we have a way of investigating the core of a star while using visible light astronomy tells us information about what's going on on the surface of our star. And what's also pretty cool is these light curves shape changes distinctly enough where if we could accurately map the intensity of light as a function of wavelength for an object, then we should be able to predict what the maximum wavelength should be. Well, one of the things that we see when we do that is we'll see curves that would say fit a star with a temperature of 5,800 Kelvin, but instead of the peak being around 500 nanometers, it might be around 700 nanometers. In astronomy, this is what we refer to as redshifting, where we take light and its frequency shifts towards the red end of the spectrum. And that happens by relative motion away from Earth. If instead the object were moving towards Earth, the wavelength would decrease, the relative frequency would shift up, and we would call that a blue shift. So, from the relativistic Doppler equation, a shifted frequency would be the true frequency of that light times the square root of 1 minus the relative velocity over 1 plus the relative velocity. So if we were to do a little bit of algebra, switch things around into wavelengths instead of frequencies, and then solve for our relative speed given the wavelengths, then what we would see would be a relative speed that would be equal to 1 minus the shifted wavelength over the true wavelength squared divided by 1 plus the shifted wavelength over the true wavelength squared. So our ratio of wavelengths is 7 fifths. So 1 minus 7 fifths squared 
divided by 1 plus 7 fifths squared gives me negative 0.32. So that means that star would have to be moving away from us with a velocity of 0.32 times the speed of light. Thanks for watching.